Welcome to Engineering a UAV Week 8. If you're new to the series, I'm trying to develop a UAV without any experience and I'm only 19. I also have basically no money, so for that reason, I'm showing my progress on YouTube every single week. This allowed us to create a team of like 15 people that are constantly working on developing this thing. And you guys will be able to see the progress, which is fun. Introducing Navius. Engineering, developing and selling the most capable transportation UAV at the lowest cost. With each drone carrying five kilograms worth of whatever the customer needs. Our current goal, saving lives. Each UAV will be able to feed and hydrate two people with a total flight time of two hours and the ability to take off and land vertically for tight spots or launching from a van. But if I want to feed people in Ukraine's front line or the Gaza Strip, where trucks can't even come and with thousands of people in need, we need to go further than this. Because why send one drone when you can send a hundred? All in a drone swarm formation, launched and controlled from a safe distance, capable of feeding 200 people. All right, the rest of the trailer is not finished yet, okay? I'm sorry. This week, I ordered PU foam, and this is going to be the first video where I'm doing something in real life. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll be trying out to mold PU foam, and uh, yeah, enjoy. Hey there. In the previous videos, I mentioned that I kind of want to be able to make the drone out of foam. So this is the outer styrofoam part, which basically you can make like with a mold like this. I modeled it real quick with an internal piece. So this is a hole to show you what goes on inside. And then you get this styrofoam piece out of it. And then as a frame, you just got this and this could be 3D printed and it has a bunch of holes in it to save weight basically. And you just slide the styrofoam piece on top of it. And I think that that could make it pretty strong while still being pretty lightweight and pretty cheap. I kind of want to do this because then in those makeshift factories in Ukraine, for example, people can just uh, get the mold or 3D print the mold themselves. And then they can just pour in the, the foam and then they don't have to like receive huge shipping boxes for basically air. Also, foam is just very cheap and lightweight. So I was going to test it out this week. But first, we need to design a test mold. So first, we started with this block. It's, by the way, it's just a tube with a nose cone, and it's just a test, like I said. But it's full scale, so that's good. But this block was like 16 kilograms worth of filament, so it's way too big uh, and way too expensive. I'm not going to do that. So then Jordi asked around. By the way, Jordi designed that. Jordi asked around on a school, and uh, a very experienced person with 3D printers said that you can print without support if it's 30 30% steep or less. So he designed a new version of the mold, also not as blocky and just way smaller, and perfectly made so that it does not need support. For example, the holes where the screws go is like a teardrop shape, which means that it can print without support. Those are all things you gotta think about apparently. 3D printing is a thing of its own and um, I'm going to figure that out later in this video. It's going to be very frustrating. So this design basically brought it down to only two kilograms for the entire thing. So that's more than affordable. Then I went ahead and bought 5.5 kilograms worth of filament and I ordered the PU foam. The PU foam said it would take three weeks to arrive. So I reached out to polyestershopper.nl. Shout out to them. And they said that they could deliver it sooner and that they wouldn't mind giving me advice on the mold. And then it actually arrived in only two days or three days, I think, which is honestly amazing. So shout out to them. So apparently the filament I bought five rolls of was pretty bad and hard to work with, which is not from the web shop I was just talking about. It was from somewhere else. Um, so I was trying to print the mold and I filled about eight times eight times that was the most frustrating thing ever and i still as i'm speaking right now i still didn't figure it out i made about every single beginner mistake i can make extruder too hot extruder too cold forgot to level the bed extruder getting clogged printing without a brim 
printing with a brim, printing slow, printing fast. I tried literally everything, but it's still not working. So I actually thought that it had to do with the filaments being on this weird standard roll and it not like rolling properly. So it took a lot of force to get the filament in the extruder. I thought that because the extruder would just stop extruding filament at some point and it would also make ticking sounds sometimes, which can mean that it's not able to feed the filament in or that it's getting clogged. So Jordi came up with this amazing idea drawn on snapchat so we went to the hardware store and we got some of the items and built it together and it looked like this it was standing on bearings and it actually worked really well but sadly it did not solve the problem but at least we have this thing now i mean that's better than nothing so i think it has to do with the filament and i will be testing out settings in the next video to get a proper feel on how to print well with this filament because with the previous filament i had i didn't have any of these issues When the PU foam arrived, I started printing a small 4x4x4cm cube with a lid with some pulls so that I can clamp it on the table without it bending stuff, you know? Jordi made this for me as well, so big thanks to him. And also it says Navius, which is plus 10 credits. Luckily this print did go well, so uh, I brought it outside and I started mixing the foam. I poured in way too much in the cube, I did some math and I thought I added the right amount but I hugely overestimated it. As you can see the foam escaped everywhere on the sides. I did leave some open lines to make sure that this was possible in this scenario though. The leftover liquid also started to expand and it was expanded a lot. It is such a weird material because it's genuinely so light yet so strong when you touch it. It feels so unnatural and that whilst being so cheap. When the mold hardened I was having some issues when trying to take it off. I had to try and cut the sides with a blade which was honestly a pain to do. This footage is 20 minutes of me trying to take it out before giving up. I like how on this footage you can see the weather go from cloudy to clear to cloudy in the span of like 20 minutes. Welcome to Holland. So what did I learn? The foam is strong and promising but it does stick to plastic and at least with a two piece mold it is impossible to get it out. It also melted the sides of the test box so if the issue also arises with the bigger test mold with thick walls then we might have to print with ABS instead of PLA because the reaction of the foam actually warms up a bit to like 50 degrees celsius and I think it should be fine with PLA but just I don't know I probably poured in too much. And I mean the test box had really thin walls. I contacted the shop owners again and told them how it went. They recommended me to get PVA which you can paint on the mold and after drying for 3-4 to four hours it will not stick to the PU foam. I'm editing right now and it's currently Tuesday of the next week. But after contacting them they offered to send me uh, the PVA for free along with a few other things that you need to paint it and stuff. So honestly a huge shout out to polyestershopa.com. They literally have anything from polyester resin to epoxy to resin art to lacquers and paint to silicon rubber, Glass fiber, floor systems to boat and crystal, and crystal and mold. I don't even know what that is. Personal protection, fabrics, packaging, fillers, gifts, and so much more. Honestly, <laughs> go on. It's, it's a huge list. They actually ship in all of Europe, so you guys would also be able to order from their website. I will put a link to their website in the description. 
And if you ever need help, you can simply WhatsApp them. That's what I did. And they'll be giving you any advice that you need, like they did with me. And they're honestly super helpful and they respond pretty quickly as well. So that's honestly great. If you're ever doing anything with foam or with glass fiber stuff and polyester and stuff like that, you should definitely go to them. So this will be arriving tomorrow. So next week, hopefully you will see me using it and testing if that works better. Because a week is only seven days, this is all the progress I was able to make on the mold situation. But of course, we still have an entire team working on engineering the UAV. First of all, a new person joined who has 15 years of experience designing and operating UAVs. And he just instantly made a huge amount of progress for us. So a big, big shout out to James Hawk. He's a legend. So the first thing that he came up with was a till sitter design. We were all mostly thinking that a till sitter design would be too complex because finding strong enough motors would be hard. If you look at this PDF, which Nicholas worked out, you can see that he tested a bunch of motor configurations. So shout out to him. This was a lot of work. And to sum it up, it was cheaper and lighter to use a combustion engine in combination with four electric fetal motors. Of course, those four propellers will not be in use during the horizontal flight because we think building a tilt rotor will be structurally complex and thus more expensive. But having those four props there will cause drag, which is not optimal. We can fix this by putting the props along with the fuselage like this, but it'll still give some drag and we would have to figure out how to achieve this and thus adding some more complexity, although it might just be quite easy. You also have these like folding propellers or something, but yeah. Maybe there's even better designs, so before we think that out, let's just see if there's a better approach. This tilt sitter design didn't end up being that optimal compared to the five motor design though. And when James and Nicholas were figuring out the numbers of the motors required and stuff, they figured that out. Then in a second attempt, you can see this is what he started with. And he sent pictures of the progress in the server so you guys can see the progress pretty nicely. So this is where we started or where he started. So it turned into this and you can see this is a possible design for a five motor setup. As you can see, he even added these landing gears, which is nice. But then James stumbled up on a much better design and he went right into CAD to get it going. And it's a till sitter with only one combustion motor. It looks complex but it looks cool and it has been done before and very efficiently. Nicholas drew up a design for the inside and how to manage the center of gravity on a plane like this. So it would be adjustable payload sizes like the we imagined in the previous videos and it would also help with the balance. This design does beg the question, how do you control it when it only has one motor? And the answer is a duct with flaps simply controlled by servers like this. This setup would allow it to push air in any direction and we might even have to add like a few more flaps to even be more controllable. In terms of control, apparently Artipilot has software to control a tilt sitter like this, so that's amazing as well. This design solves a lot of issues. It's lighter, it has the range we need, it could have the speed we need, it is cheaper and it is still relatively simple to build and impressively it still looks sexy as hell. We are still working out where to go from here so I will keep you up to date in the future videos. We will also be working on a half skill prototype which is nice. Also PCBWay reached out for a potential sponsorship so that will help with building the PCB and other prototype parts. About the PCB, by the way, we made a clear flowchart of what the flight controller needs to do, and we are actively working on it in the background, but there is not that much to show yet, so that will be for the future. We did decide on a programming language, one that is quite safe, aka Rust, but we might still go with C, I don't know. Not my thing, I don't know much about programming. And someone new joined to help me make a simulation to test if my idea with the offline positioning using image comparison is possible or not. Basically, everyone thinks it's not possible and I still think it is possible or at least in combination with a few things. Of course, making a whole simulation takes some time so you will also see this in the next video or the one after that, it depends. I tried to make it myself with AI before asking the new person Joshua to do it. AI is very frustrating with this and I'm not even going to show you that because yeah, I just wasted way too much time on that. Not proud of it. A big shout out to Joshua for being willing to spend time on building this. He actually knows what he's doing and he's going to be using Gazebo, which is like, I'm still not sure what it is, but you guys might know it. It's something with like simulations, like RC simulations, but yeah, I'm, I'm just scared to say dumb, dumb stuff because I'm recording right now and I 
would have to look it up. But another new person also joined and he has experience getting funding for projects like these. He will be focusing on achieving this and getting this project off the ground financially as well. So honestly, a huge, huge shout out. Me and him talked a bit about everything and uh, you guys will hear things as soon as there's like big, big progress in that department. There has also been some progress with the low level coding. So the uh, coding of the flight controller that we're trying to make. There's not enough progress yet to show it because it's not very tangible just yet. But we are still looking for people. So if you know how to do systems engineering and low level programming and you have enough time and actually want to do stuff, then please sign up to help the team out with the link in the description. It's an application form. This also counts if you think you can help with anything else and you have time with anything else. Helping me manage things, helping me find uh, sponsors, for example, is also great. Stuff like that. So please, if you have time, you would help us out amazingly. You're very welcome in the team. All in all, great progress. Oh, and I've also been working on the new trailer, but you guys will see that whenever it's finished. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to not miss the next week's video. Also subscribe to my Patreon to support this and I will see you.